everyone. Welcome to another episode of Confessions of Impact Entrepreneurs. I'm here today with my very extraordinary role model, Jane Nemkava. And uh, just so if you don't know who Jane is, let me tell you. She is the VP and General Manager of Global Services for Machine Intelligence, Lionbridge. It's a great company and Jane has done amazing things there. Um, I'm gonna be reading her bio and we're gonna just chat a little bit. Uh, so let's just jump right into it, okay? Um, let me tell you, because I don't wanna miss any, any piece of her incredible background, so I'm just gonna read it off. Are we ready? Jane has been with Lionbridge since June of 2014. And um, I'm gonna also, uh, there, we'll put Jane on full screen. Lionbridge has for 20 years provided international organizations with the language, cultural, and technical expertise they need to transform how they communicate globally. Prior to that, Jane was Chief Sales Officer and EVP for Mar Maravia and was instrumental in the company's exponential growth in the high tech and life sciences sectors. Jane's passionate about language, philosophy, and machine learning. Born and raised in California, Jane has traveled extensively and lived in France and the Czech Republic. She was recently drawn back to her SoCal roots and is raising three children in Thousand Oaks, California. Educated in the U.S. and France, Jane Nemkava holds a BA in philosophy from Thomas Aquinas College, double master degrees in business administration and translation interpretation from Ecole Superieure de Commerce de saint Etienne and Université Jean Monnet saint Etienne, respectively, as well as a master's degree in French translation from Middlebury Institute of International Studies. So excited to have you here, Jane. Okay, tell us your story about how you came to work at Lionbridge and founded the GSMI division. Thanks, Molly. It's great to be with you. Um, yeah, so I, I, as you mentioned, I, I joined uh, Lionbridge about three years ago, and um, I had been working in the localization language industry already for quite some time. That, that's sort of my background, as you mentioned. And uh, I joined Lionbridge really because I had been working with so many of the top um, AI companies and had seen the kinds of service needs that were lying ahead in the future and which are so prevalent today. And really what I did when I joined Lionbridge was help drive a lot of growth with these top AI companies delivering all kinds of services, but mainly around um, artificial intelligence, which um, you know takes shape in many different ways. So uh, really with Lionbridge, um, I've been uh, focusing and created this year the GSMI group, which is uh, services that support machine intelligence. And really those range uh, across the board. That's wonderful. Can you just elaborate for the viewers out there who don't know what machine intelligence is? Tell, tell everyone a little bit more about that. Right. So what we do as a services company, which we, we are ourselves a services company and not an artificial intelligence company, we really support the companies who are themselves creating um, AI or machine learning or sometimes called machine intelligence, which comprises um, many different areas and, and meanings, actually. So what we support and the services that we support can be across the gamut in any aspect of developing an intelligent system, whether it's uh, text, speech, or image data, ads or search or mapping data. So those are the areas in which we're supporting essentially machine learning, fine tuning algorithms, or supporting um, uh, intelligent systems and developing them so that they're working more intuitively and, and naturally. Excellent. Can you go into a little more depth about the services that you offer? Yeah, so um, the categorization that I mentioned would be sort of the areas that we focus on in the different ways in which human machine interface works. So text, uh, speech, images, uh, ads, search, and mapping. 
And in those areas, um, there's many different models and in, in operational ways in which um, companies are looking to get data or acquire data or take what they have and make it better data. And so the services that we have are really built around that in main intrinsic need. So that need is, is um, uh, supported by different service areas and it can kind of be very, um, different in, in nature. So we sort of grouped them as a service offering into linguistic and data services, as well as linguistic staffing, user experience testing, and underlying all of that uh, subject matter expertise in the different programs and program management that's required to support all of those. So when people ask, you know, what are the types of services that you typically provide for your customers? It can be anywhere from uh, transcription or annotation, basic labeling and rating of different uh, task types to provide data to our customers, or it can be much, much more complicated, um, such a, as you know, generating um, t uh, testing and um, information for um, infotainment centers or automotive companies or other speech-related um, and text-related needs in order to fine-tune uh, machine-translated content or things along those lines. So we are um, pretty agile in being able to develop that, and we do that by uh, definition and by purpose because the nature of the work that our customers are doing is experimental, and they're constantly creating new uh, ways in which they need the um, operational execution of that data acquisition to happen. Fantastic. I'm going to pop in for a moment. While you were talking, I was showing your wonderful Facebook page to the viewers. And I was wondering if you could give me an example of the perfect customer out there for you, in case any of us are that person or come across them so we can introduce you. Well, we, we work with a gamut of small um, to large companies, and they can be companies in different uh, sectors, but mainly the best ones are the ones that really um, we're, we're a good partner to are uh, artificial intelligence companies themselves who have uh, data needs that are probably on the on the larger scale. So companies that are ready to really get data in many, many, many different locales, languages, types of environments, um, or if they need a lot, a, a lot of flexible um, operational models in order to to get the data if they have security requirements or something like that. So kind of for us, the ideal customer is somebody who has large scalable data needs. Okay, that is wonderful. So I understand that you, of course, are going to be, uh, you're our title sponsor and we really appreciate your support. And it's been a tremendous amount of support, so thank you. Um, you're on the Thriving in the AI Entertainment Tribe panel, and I was wondering if you could give us a little preview about some of the items that you'll be discussing, and I'll show the viewers uh, the AI Showbiz website as well while you're talking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely, and yes, thank you, Molly, for organizing and doing such a good job and driving this. Um, we're happy to be a sponsor and happy to participate. We're looking forward to it. And um, yeah, I think there's probably about three things I'm really thinking of talking about on that panel and focusing on, which is probably of interest to anybody in AI, but also particularly to folks in the entertainment industry who are starting to um, themselves understand what kind of data that they they need. So there's kind of three things I'm thinking of. One is um, really talking about the importance of a partnership and working with somebody, if you're yourself creating, you know, an algorithm or a machine and you need data, um, how we can partner and uh, taking a look also at the question of quality and what that means, particularly if you're wanting global data and, and you really need to focus kind of at an international level. And then the third thing is, is maybe more about sort of jobs and how we're contributing, particularly to employment and these types of questions in the AI industry. This year alone, I think we've um, employed probably 200,000 uh, crowd workers. Um, which has provided opportunities and jobs to people not only, you know, in the U.S., but in countries all over the world, in, including, you know, Africa and, 
and all throughout Europe and, and Asia, which is um, really remarkable given that, that um, it's uh, not always so easy to do that. Well, we can't wait for the big show. And I just want to remind people about how they can get tickets. Um, they are available and you go to www.aishow.biz. If you're not local to Hollywood, where this is taking place on Tuesday, January 16th, you can tune in anywhere in the world that you have Wi-Fi and see special backstage interviews with the speakers, our trailblazers like Jane, throughout the day. Um, so get your tickets now. And um, I've had a lot of questions on the pricing. It's only $20 for the online viewing. Tickets are $150 regularly, but I will tell everyone listening, if you're part of the digital family, and we just had a big reunion of that group of people, there's a DFR20. That's DFR20 promo. So thank you. And I just want to end by thanking Jane so much for your time on this weekend. Uh, it's a delight. Thank you again for your tremendous support. A wonderful interview today. Very exciting to be able to talk to my role model today virtually in the virtual studio. And of course, a big thank you to Horatio as well from Cinema Viva Productions. So thank you, Jane, so much. Thank you, Molly. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to wave goodbye. And Jane, just stand by for a second uh, while uh, Horatio uh, takes us off screen and hopefully can show our...